Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. <laughs> steering centers, which does not happen with the latest Maruti cars. Steering now. Here I've kept it like this. It will not self center. It just does not self center. It will keep going like this. So there's no concept of self centering in the steering wheel. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the new Maruti Alto K10. After being missing in action for two years, the Alto is back. I mean, the Alto K10 is back because the Alto was always there and it's achieving sales record after sales record. Anyway, straight away, let's open the engine bay. And there you can see vibrations from the three cylinder engine. Of course, that is the chassis number. There is no insulation here and this is super duper light. Like insanely crazy light. My goodness, it's absolutely insane. Anyways, the grill is huge. Take that Audi and BMW because the grill size is massive on this Alto K10. There's the Suzuki logo. Everything is halogen. You can see the bulbs inside. This is for the indicator and this is for the main light, of course. No fog lights, nothing of that sort. Hexagonal treatment on the grill, of course, and you get one nozzle for the washer fluid. Now, coming to the side of the car, this is actually 20 mm longer in terms of wheelbase for more space at the rear. And again, the design is very plain and basic somehow. The wheels are also very small. That's the reason it kind of looks ungainly here. The tire size happens to be 145, 80, 13. You get wheel caps, of course. There you can see the suspension. And that is the indicator. Mirrors are not body colored either. The antenna is huge. Look at the length of that antenna. You can just put it down to not make it obvious. But yeah, it is a long antenna. And this kind of feels cheap. The pull-out type door handles, of course. Now coming to the rear, especially from the lower part, you can see the skinny tires. Yeah, the tires are like really very small. So yes, that's done for fuel efficiency. Pestle Khan's fingers are tooth which stay away from this vibrating exhaust. You get parking sensors at the rear, two parking sensors that is. And it says Alto K10. These lights might remind you of the Celerio. Again, everything is a bulb. You get a high mounted stop lamp as well. No rear wiper washer. You don't get any of that. Let's open the boot. I'd actually open it from the inside because you have to put the key to open it or open it from the inside. There's no electromagnetic tailgate opener, obviously. At this price, you won't expect it. This is the parcel shelf and that falls down. Okay, now you can push it ahead to increase the boot carrying capacity because it's a single piece folding one. 214 liters is the size of the boot, which is very small indeed. And this parcel shelf is also super duper light. So you're going to put it back into place. Somehow it doesn't stay. So it should have had, you know, but anyways, let's just keep it like this. Below here, you get a spare wheel, which is full-sized. Of course, it will be full-sized because there are no tires which come smaller than the one the, this Alto is already sporting. <laughs> anyways, let's just shut this again. Super duper light, like crazy lightness everywhere. Now, the thing is, rear is not practical because there are no door pockets here. No rear power windows, of course. Manually, you have to retract the windows, which is a kind of a bummer. And there are no magazine holders here either. Some amount of storage here where this, I don't know, rubber thingy is lying. But legroom is actually impressive. So is the knee room. Knee room and legroom is actually quite nice there. I can put my foot below the front seat because there's good amount of space there. Under that support is okay. Headroom seems adequate for someone as tall as me. My head is almost touching, but I'm six feet, two inches tall, which means there's a decent amount of headroom. There's a handle to hold onto, of course. And these are non-adjustable, but that's fine. You know why? Because center passenger does not get a head only. The cabin is very narrow, so three people cannot sit in. But yeah, this is not safe at all. We need proper headrest, Maruti Suzuki. Please give us that. Handle to hold on to here. Everybody gets a handle to hold on to. The driver does not get it. Front seats also do not get the adjustable headrest function. Dashboard design will remind you a bit of the Espresso, but there are a lot of revisions there. And obviously everything is hard and scratchy plastic at this price. That is what you actually get. Lap belt here, of course, but decent space huh, for a car, which is so chintu minto. Now let's get to the front and doors are super duper light, like super light doors. Front seats are actually comfortable enough, which is quite surprising. This is not height adjustable. Door pockets are big enough at the front. There are no buttons here. You know why? Power window controls are there in the center. Lot of dummy buttons. So in the future, if you want to install things, you can do that as well. Doesn't seem to have a proper dead pedal and there you can see a lot of exposed bits too. Now here, you get a glove box, which is kind of flimsy. First aid kit is like huge. Yeah. And it has an iPad inside. Yeah, it says oval iPad. 
let's just shut this yeah it's actually become smaller when compared to before and a little light and flimsy in fact everything feels very light in this car somehow let's turn off the indicators these are actually the controls for the power windows the placed here in the center these are the controls for the air conditioning air conditioning is actually a chiller this is the handbrake of the vehicle there's some storage space here twin cup holder some storage space there one usb and an aux plug right there which actually connects to apple carplay and android auto connectivity which is impressive in a car of this price 12 volt charging socket as well okay let's turn off the lights and as soon as you do that this become bright this becomes brighter of course steering is again very similar to what you've seen in other maruti cars this is exact cut copy paste from the espresso the espresso has it here they removed it from here and they put it right there and it's a bit disappointing because there's no tachometer tachometer was present earlier on the alto k10 of course but that has been removed now so you get a speedometer which is very big it's huge and then here we've got an odometer then we have a gear position indicator a fuel meter telltale lights are placed everywhere and where is that button yeah there okay i can browse through a lot of information so twin trip meters are there of course real time fuel efficiency actual fuel efficiency which is 15.7 km per liter right now the range and that's about it yeah kind of basic audio controls here phone controls there steering doesn't move for each or rake this is a decent system actually 7 inch i think it's a smart play studio something which we get on a lot of maruti cars let's listen to an audio right away <laughs> Audio quality is average. It's not bad. It's not great. Like I was telling you, it gets Apple CarPlay, it gets Android Auto connectivity as well, and then uh, I mean the graphics and all are fine, of course. Now let's get into reverse because it's got rear parking sensors, but unlike the Espresso, there is no display here, so that's kind of basic. And then the cabin is not wide enough, so you can adjust the mirrors like this because they have to be manually adjusted. Yes, that's right. And a lot of hard plastics, so some amount of leg room has been made here. Rather, knee room has been made here because of revisions here in the center console. So that's kind of cool as well. Meanwhile, let's use the wipers right away. There is no water inside. Oh, the, there is water. It's just struggling to come out. It's just like coming out, and it is going on the. Bone it itself. <laughs> Wipers work fine. This does not get the auto dimming function. Yeah, there is no dimming function here. Forget auto dimming. You can't even dim it like that. Light placement here on the top, and of course, basic. So is this basic? And there's a microphone here for the Bluetooth system, of course. What do you think about the dashboard design of this car? The horn. Horn is also very unique. Let's do one thing. Let's start driving right away. Before that, let me tell you, it should have got rear power windows. It should have got rear wiper washer. It should have got, you know, internally electrically adjustable mirrors as well. For this price, I expect that and probably more. It has got dual airbags though. Let's go. All right. Let's start driving. Before that, you can see the key. Unlock the car. Lock the car. Very premium key for something like an Alto. Straight away. And I have to press the brake to turn it on. So it has this brake lock as well. and then you don't realize when it turns on it's so refined here i put the handbrake down i put it into first gear i'm not touching the accelerator at all it's creeping ahead so it has the creep function which is very beneficial in stop go traffic so you don't have to get into the throttle or modulate it it will creep at around 8 km per hour let me lock the doors yeah it's got central locking but it doesn't have a dedicated button to lock and unlock the doors of course and then onto the throttle the problem is at low speeds now there is a bit of jerk which you can feel so it's not very smooth there i think they have actually made the ideal rpm lower in order to achieve better fuel efficiency but i can't really tell because the tachometer is vanished now so yes now when you drive it very smoothly and with you know part throttle inputs the car performs very well especially this ags automated gear shift okay automated manual transmission or automatic gear shift whatever you want to call it okay which is like a jugaru gear shift but it has improved dramatically even compared to before so maruti has really worked on it to improve it now you see i am actually on park throttle things are very smooth and refined engine is not very noisy gear shifts are also happening without you know letting you know that they are shifting themselves here and there so that is actually the benefit and most people will end up driving it as a aram se in this regard this engine is fantastic but you know i am fast beams so i have to give it the beans so we are going to come to a halt here hazard lights on and i am actually going to get into manual mode here into first gear left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator driving the motor 
first gear 45 okay it will not upshift unless and until i decide to do so so it gives you manual control of things can you imagine a car as simple and basic as an alto is giving me manual control of things second gear 83 km per hour so that is actually fantastic and now in third gear it will easily cross 100 km per hour so uh, kudos to maruti for actually giving proper manual control of things even in something like an alto with an automated manual transmission so that's kind of fab here now the problem is that the steering has no feel okay look at this there's no feel and there's so much body roll now you can see that happen so let's corner a little bit aggressively no i can't even corner aggressively because there's so much roll the front washes out very soon i was not even like 30% enthusiastic there but the front washes out super duper soon so what really powers this car of course it's a 1 liter engine which is the k10 motor k actually stands for the k series not really for killer or you know uh whatever you want to call it actually but it is actually a very enthusiastic engine but not with this gearbox certainly as you can see performance is very nice it's actually splendid but then you come on bumps on the road and you have to be a little careful because the suspension is on the softer side so what does this engine actually get it's a three cylinder unit it gets dual vvt it gets dual jet dual jet is two injectors per cylinder which has been done in the interest of fuel economy and uh, overall this car is actually tuned for economy and that's the reason why it has splendid numbers as well in fact uh, the automated manual transmission is better than the manual in terms of fuel efficiency numbers this will return close to 25 km per liter in ideal conditions which never exist so in the real world expect somewhere between 14 to 18 km per liter which is quite respectable brakes are okay little spongy and then obviously nose dive as well anyways out of manual mode left foot on the big right foot on the accelerator now figo you can feel the delay between shifts because every time a shift happens na the car sends a command to japan and suzuki approves of it and then only the gear shifts so yeah gear shifts are not that fast and then you encounter bad roads and you can feel that this car is super duper light the problem is that the ride now becomes really very bad at high speeds so the ride is actually good at low speeds because of the soft suspension and the massive sidewall which this car has I mean the sidewall is bigger than what was there on the earlier K10 and that's the reason ride is actually very nice at low speeds. So at low speeds it performs fantastically well but there's no concept of high speed stability there's no concept of steering feel and that's a bit of a bummer. You see big bumps yeah there it does take it in its stride quite well huh doesn't hesitate much. The horn is actually very meek and we are at a cross road where people are coming from everywhere so we is going to come to a halt and let others go first. On to the throttle So it's not very fast with shifts, and this is a very lethargic gearbox, and becomes very vocal in the top end of the rev range. So it becomes kind of noisy as well. So uh, the thing is that the engine is better in the mid range. Okay, low speed because of those vibrations isn't that fantastic, and the top end is also good, but just very vocal. So it's not very smooth there. Overall, I would say that the engine is fab. This gearbox is better for convenience. If you really want spirited driving, get the manual. The manual is obviously better and cheaper as well, just by fifty-seven thousand rupees. Yeah, that's it. Fifty-seven thousand rupees is the price difference. That's not much, honestly. Yeah, just fifty-seven thousand rupees for an automatic, insane. So that's where Maruti comes into play all the time with value for money. Now here we are going to actually take a U-turn and try it without taking a reverse. So I show you the turning radius of the car. Look at how comfortable. Possibly you can actually turn the car. It's absolutely crazy, and this is actually a two-way road as well because there, there's a tree ahead, and they have kind of shut that, so we have to come from here a little carefully. So turning it is is fantastic. Very easy to drive. A pillar is very narrow as well, so you know you get a good view of what's around. And uh, then for me being tall. I think the seat position is fine but people who are short will have a bit of an issue because obviously uh, the seats don't get the height and just function anyways we are going to come to a halt here and I am going to launch it yet again will it wheel spin of course it will not because of this gearbox but it does wheel spin like mad for the manual here and off we go there is a tree ahead right in the middle of the road And thing is that every time you turn enthusiastically, you can feel the body roll. So there's crazy amount of body roll. Problem is that there's just too much vertical movement when you speed up. So in terms of uh, the suspension refinement for high speeds, it's just not there. This is a car which is apt for the city. It's not that great for the highway. It's a car which. I mean is exceptional in the city actually because it's light easy to drive very efficient smooth and obviously very easy on the pocket 
as far as maintenance goes as far as cost of ownership goes as far as buying price not really only for the low variants because the high variants come at quite the premium now prices have gone really very high these days ah of figo so basically there's six variants on offer pricing starts at 4.74 lakhs for the base variant and out of those six variants two are actually for the automatic or the ags top end variant goes all the way to 6.85 lakhs so this costs 6.85 lakhs which is quite a lot in fact it costs 1.07 lakhs more than the alto 800 so for the additional power and performance you're paying quite a lot but then of course you're getting different aesthetics here the car looks cute it looks better in person it looks kind of out of proportion when you see it in pictures so yeah i'll give it that that it definitely looks better in person or maybe it grows on you with time as well so overall i think this is a good car in terms of ease of driving and all that but i'm not too sure about the safety aspect because we know how well the upsi do the espresso scored and this is underpinned by the hardtech platform as well so in terms of safety things could be better because the car really doesn't feel that safe to drive in terms of you know the lightness it feels very light and then you come across a bump you kind of uh, you know hold on to because you know that the car will just not take it uh, like with a lot of uh, uh, authority but then the quid also feels very similar so i can't really blame maruti suzuki here they have to make a car at a price point it's the customer who ends up deciding whether they want such a car and it seems there are a lot of people in india who want such a car mainly for the uh, fuel efficiency cost of ownership is easy on the pocket and a lot of other factors which make this alto actually very affordable but you know when i'm driving this car i'm getting this espresso vibes because of the screen because of all this i feel i'm actually driving an espresso so a lot of part sharing here and there and still the prices are not very competitive for the high variants which is a bit disappointing now there is the formula 1 corner aruj is coming ahead we are in spa let's see how does this do okay little bit enthusiasm here flicky flicky the problem is okay now we flip oh Oh, lo, 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 lo. <laughs> so grip levels are not that great, and the steering has a mind of its own. You don't even realize what the steering is trying to do, which actually reminds me. I'm not even mentioned the power and torque numbers, or have I don't know 67 horsepower and 89 newton meters of torque. So you know, power and torque has been reduced when compared to before. I think the older car was producing 90 newton meters of torque and 68 horsepower. One horsepower and newton meters doesn't matter because they keep decreasing the weight of the car. The car is very light. It's super duper 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 insanely light a car. So because of which it's very efficient as well but i'm not too sure out on the highway how it behaves because i drive it on the highway trust me and then you have to continuously keep correcting the steering wheel this is the car you honestly cannot drive with one hand now why would you want to drive one hand because you're driving a manual now you'll be shifting gears and you know just imagine you're going through a corner shifting a gear then you have to really like wonder where you're going because this steering is just like having a mind of its own it really doesn't point in the direction you wanted to point and then the front wheels don't seem connected to the steering wheel so that is a level of weakness there's no feel there's no feedback in the center position super duper weak and then you can see body roll is absolutely crazy it has so much vertical movement as well so that's a bit of a bummer but overall i would say for a city car this is absolutely fantastic oh my goodness what is this this is <laughs> is madness but thankfully ground clearance is decent enough here we are going to take it very slowly as if i'm driving a super car and there the alto did not scrape yeah it has decent ground clearance which is actually fantastic but i don't know why there are craters right in the middle of the road all of a sudden which is not the case the last time i visited this road uh vocal engine making all the sound and why is it not upshifting because i got into manual mode when did that happen i have no clue whatsoever uh, let's just come to halt here okay braking performance you want to hear that here we go This is with ABS, so it's not very sure-footed under heavy braking. I put on the brake right on the accelerator, and off we go. Oh ho oh, oh. ho! Gear shifted immediately. Car realized no, I should not be pulling so hard because there's not enough traction. There's no traction control, but somehow the system was smart enough to understand. No, 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 no! You don't do that at all. And there. Kind of feels very hairy at higher speeds, so this isn't the car you would like to push hard because you know the aero bits are all over the place. But that was not what it was designed for. The Alto might not be fantastic in all ways, but as a small car, as someone's first car, as a car meant for driving in congested cities, a car which is light on the pocket, it's absolutely fantastic. And at the end of the day, the Alto is also an emotion for most of us Indians because this has been the first car for a lot of us, not for anyone in my family, because for us it was the 800. 
hundred, and no matter how much the Alto sells, it sold forty three million units. Sorry, four point three million units. It's forty three lakh units. There's the old K ten right in front of me, but still, trust me, nothing beats the eight hundred. This is actually a forty year old eight hundred launching on full pelt. Wasn't that fantastic? And on that bombshell, it's time to end. Thank you so much for watching. I'm stuck in traffic, so there's no point in talking anymore. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,